once upon a time, nature was calm. Since the dawn of civilization, we have benefited from a stable climate. But we have been pumping trillions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And this is wrecking our climate, and it's destroying our oceans. We need to slow down. We need to stop the emissions that we're doing. One way to transition to a low carbon economy is to install solar and, and wind to reduce the amount of CO2 we emit. But we need to go further than that. Reducing emissions is necessary, but it's not sufficient. It's essential that we go further and take CO2 out. Here's why. The black curve shows what is going to happen to the level of CO2 in the atmosphere if we follow business as usual. The colored lines coming off shows what happens if all emissions cease at those points in time. That's if everybody on the planet dies, which I'm not recommending as policy. But even if that happened, there would be very slow reduction in CO2. We can learn from nature in ways in which we can reflect sunlight back into space to cool the planet or suck CO2 out of the atmosphere. So we can learn from clouds and volcanoes, forests, oceans, and rocks. Prevention is better than a cure, but if you can't prevent it, you sure need a cure. These clouds here, these show ship tracks. The emissions from the ships cause clouds to form. Those clouds are bright, they're white, they reflect sunlight back into space and that will cool the planet for a bit. This is a solar radiation management technique, and it could work for a short period of time. Another one is volcanoes. So volcanoes, when they erupt, they can spray aerosols into the upper atmosphere, and that reflects sunlight back into space. Again, that could cool the planet for a short time, and some people believe that this could be done cheaply, at least to administer, but the side effects are severe. So this plot here shows the blue line, what happens if we don't have any way of cooling the planet. The green line shows what we could do in suppressing the temperature, pushing it down by employing these techniques. But if we stop suddenly, boom, the temperature goes up very quickly. It's called the termination effect, and it could be terminal. So ultimately, we will need to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. We can learn from nature by planting trees and we could have forest large areas, but there's a limit to how far we can do this because we need that land to grow crops and for biodiversity. So we can only withdraw a certain amount of CO2 from the atmosphere that way. Another thing that we can do is that we can produce charcoal, biochar. So we grow crops and char them and turn them into coal and then bury that in the ground. It's like the reverse of, uh, of, of coal mining. But again, you're constrained by how much you can do, by the amount of land area that you have. So if you're constrained by land, how about the oceans? Well, if you put nutrients into parts of the ocean that are nutrient deficient, you can encourage algae to bloom. As they bloom, they withdraw CO2 from the atmosphere. And the idea is it sinks into the deep ocean. But what evidence we have here suggests that it's got limited potential and has harmful side effects. This image is of what are known as artificial trees. These are machines that are envisaged that could remove CO2 from the atmosphere. But this is an artist's impression. It doesn't really exist. It's what's known as a technological imaginary. And these um, processes are believed to be very expensive. So don't think they have much potential. But we can learn from nature in terms of rocks. As rocks weather, they absorb CO2. They do this slowly. But there are ways in which you can accelerate the rate at which rocks weather and in that way draw down CO2 at a fast enough rate to help us avoid dangerous climate change. Now, do these sound like a fairy tale? Well, let me tell you what's really scary. We assume that it's going to happen. The blue curve shows what's going to happen with business as usual. Only the green curve will avoid two degrees temperature rise. And in order to achieve that, we need net negative emissions. We need to take CO2 out of the atmosphere. But can we do it? Can we do it technically? Can we do it socially, politically, ethically, environmentally, economically? We bring together the experts at the Oxford Martin School to consider this, to understand, is this a dream or a nightmare, a vision or a delusion? Do we want to change the world? Do you want to change the world? We don't. In truth, we do not seek to change the world but rather keep it as it me it's meant to be. We seek to understand whether we can cure climate change. Can we? We don't know, but we certainly can't if we don't try. So join me to see if we can learn from nature to cure climate change and live happily ever after.
thank you.